Now, this video is not sponsored by Motion VFX, but I got to give them a shout out. They hooked me up with the M Collage plugin, which is actually an idea I kind of had, but didn't quite know how to execute it as far as create my own preset for it. This M Collage plugin takes it to the next level and have it all stored within DaVinci Resolve effects panel. And of course, you can customize and drag and drop from the Inspector tab. Like the neighborhood warriors. I don't miss, I don't play nothing. So on my timeline, I got this Quando Wando video. I split the clip right here. And that's when I'm gonna create my transition. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit and find basically some frames that I wanna use. I'm gonna highlight the clip. I'm gonna split the clip. I'm gonna click the back end here. I'm gonna hit Shift R to create a freeze frame. Then I'm gonna hold Shift and hit the right arrow to move ahead one frame, or actually one second. And then I'm gonna split the clip again. I'm gonna click on the back end of the clip. I'm gonna hit R. On the keyboard and then i'm gonna uncheck freeze frame so the clip can continue and basically i got my freeze frame so it'll play through get my freeze frame i'm actually going to take this and put it over here where i'm going to create the transition then i'm going to repeat that twice to give me three total freeze frames i got my three freeze frames and i stack them on top of one another i'm gonna select this one and in the middle i'm gonna hold shift and i'm gonna hit the period key that's gonna make it shift over one frame I'm gonna do the same thing for the top one, but I'm gonna hit the period key twice. I'm gonna hold shift, tap, tap. And they come in basically one frame after another. Then I'm going to the effects tab. Under toolbox, I'm going to the search. All the motion VFX's plugin start off with M, so it'd be M collage. You don't have to spell the whole thing out, it pretty much bring it up. I'm gonna hit this little drop down to bring up the full menu. You can see you have backgrounds, frames, movement, which is basically like camera movement. You have some overlays, add-ons with little highlights and underlines. You got doodles and a little scratch out, pins and clips. You got tape. And then lastly, you got typography, which is basically different little titles you can drop on top of your clip. Now, what sold me on this collage effect was the frames. You can just drag and drop them. I'm going to put on this first one here. Move my clay head. The only thing I don't like is the in and out animation, which you go into the effects tab on the inspector and deactivate those. The in and out animation is more or less if you're doing like a slideshow, so they're not necessary for what I'm doing. I'm going to bring this down, get more of the viewer. And I just drag and drop that on my freeze frame and automatically frames it up with the little Polaroid. So back into the Inspector tab on the effects, I can go to Content Controls, and I can move the content around. Usually I will use this little drop down, the little transform. But if you do that, it will only move the clip itself. I'm going to hit Control Z to put it back in place. So you have to, in order to move the frame and everything, you have to use this, or you can go through here and create a compound clip. I will only recommend doing the compound clip after you've made any adjustments that you need, though, because once you've done that, once you've turned into a compound clip, you can move this around freely. You can no longer edit the effects in the Inspector tab. So I'm actually going to hit Control Z to undo that. Then it's going to turn it back to a freeze frame. I can go back into the Effects tab on the Inspector and make my adjustments. Now, as far as adjustments, the only thing I really use is a drop shadow. Go in here and change the distance a little bit. You really can't see it on this framing because the background's kind of dark. But you can, if you want to, just to so you can actually see it's there, increase the strength and the angle. Oh, and cut it on first. <laughs> you can see the angle right there. I'm just gonna bring the strength back down. And the distance, I'm bringing in a little bit. You can see a little bit there, like I said, the background's kind of dark. You run your cursor over the top of them, you get a preview. So I'm gonna drag and drop this one on. Again, I'm going to effects and I'm gonna cut off the in and out animation. And now I have that there. I'm gonna hit the content drop down, move it to the side. I'm gonna change the content scale, bring it down a little bit. If I want to, I can rotate it as well. And then I'm gonna move it a little bit up top here. Then I'm gonna select my last freeze frame, grab another framing. Now when you play them back, they kind of just quickly overlay over one another. A quick tip, if you right click and go to the render cast fusion effect, and click on the name, they help with the rendering as well. Cause sometimes the effect, since it's a drag and drop effect, sometimes they won't render automatically. So I do that actually for each one. I'm gonna go through now and actually put some tape on the top, kind of overlay it on top and drag this here. And just like with the frames, I'm gonna cut off the in and out animation. I'm gonna use the transform overlay here to actually reposition the tape. So I'm gonna just move it up here. If I need to resize or rescale, I can go in the inspector tab and drop it down. 
And then instead of having to recopy that, I can actually just select this, hold Alt, drag it up. Then I can go into my view here and then just move it over to the side. And the last piece of tape here is a little straight line. I'm going to go here and click Content Controls. I'm going to increase the scaling of it. And if I pull this up, you can see here I actually have the tape time exactly the same as my freeze frame. If you want to try to condense this down, you can go through here and highlight them all and create a compound clip. If you're coming from Premiere Pro, this is pretty much the equivalent of nesting. If you right click this and go into Open in Timeline, you actually go into that compound clip and still make further edits and stuff that you need. So here's just showing the effect one by one. And I can go back into my timeline one. Actually, that would be timeline two for me. And it shows the effect. Now, I want the effect to end where you two clips are split. If you play my timeline, you see it, it they animate in, then it animate out. So I'm actually going to take this bottom clip here. I'm actually going to move it up to cut into the compound clip. In the effects panel on the video transitions, I'm going to grab the brightness flash and drop it in the middle. I'm going to highlight it and actually I'm going to make it a little shorter. About 10 frames to do. They don't need to linger too long. Something else you can do is a cool transition as well. If you right click your compound clip, open a timeline. I'm going to grab my last free frame and the last tape, this long piece here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make them a new compound clip. Then I'm going to right click again and open Infusion. With my medium one selected, I'm going to grab a transform node. I'm going to go to frame 21 and I'm going to increase the size, but I'm also change the pivot. So I'm going to change this pivot to about center of the frame. I'm going to make sure to set a keyframe. Then I'm going to go back to frame zero. And I'm going to click this little indicator here to drop it down to the original size. As you play it back, you have a quick zoom in. Then I'm going to the spline editor, hit transform. I'm going to zoom to fit, select all. I'm going to hit F to flatten. And then I'm going to get a little bit of easing to it just by dragging this little notches here. Or you can hit T on the keyboard. You can see the ease in and ease out. Make sure you go into the settings and then activate motion blur. Now back on my edit page in the main timeline. I hit P to preview. Like the neighborhood warriors. I don't miss. I don't play none. I don't miss. Now there is a lot more in this plugin. I barely scratched the surface on what's in the plugin. I just want to give a quick example of how the plugin can be used and, and pretty much how I'm probably going to be using it going forward. It's also giving me ideas for my own preset that I'm probably going to try to work on here coming soon. Other than that, if you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comment section down below. For more information, check out the link in the description and I'll see you in the next video.